G'day guys and gal, I'm actually pretty ashamed it has taken me this long to make this video. Margin Wright is one of my favorite characters, so I think I just assumed I gave him his own video already, but no. The most hardcore, badass, dope as hell Eldar character has been deprived of his time in the sun, and that is a sin I will now absolve. There's not much else to say about him in the intro other than, look at him. How can you say that the space cells are a bunch of pussies when one of them is decked out in bone armor, wielding the equivalent of an Eldar Gatling gun that also doubles as a power scythe? Man, if this is what the Grim Reaper was actually like, then maybe I could die not happy, but at least impressed. Before we get started, the sale of the 2024 cosplay calendar continues, and I want to thank you guys for an amazing launch biggest ever on record. For those of you that don't know, I have commissioned five stunning models with 11 different Battle Mace 40 million cosplays for them to model. I mean, I guess it's six models if you include me. The best part is that it's a nude cosplay calendar, so these girls, and me, bear it all. You would think that sounds a bit trashy, but with the quality of the photos combined with some god tier editing, it's actually extremely artistic and tasteful. Like even if it's not your style, you'd probably still appreciate the quality. The calendar comes in A4 for the subtle in the bedside drawer situation, and A3 to display it loud and proud, as well as a digital version, for when you want to skip the novelty of the calendar and go straight to the goodies. This here also features a legendary edition, which is signed by me, and features a very very special cosplay by a legendary model, which cost me more to make than all the other models and cosplays combined, so yeah, it was fucking expensive. Legendary Edition also comes in A3. We have already packed over a thousand calendars that are going out Wednesday, with thousands more to be packed by next week, so quick turnaround time on this one which is good. Legendary Edition will take slightly longer, as the super cosplay that features in it took a long time to prepare and was the reason why this calendar was delayed till March. Worth it though. Link is below. Thank you guys and gals for the support on this. Today we'll go over the badassery of Margin Ra, focusing more on his highlights and what makes him so awesome as opposed to the usual lore story we often get. Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> For some context on who this absolute chad is, when the Elder fucked their way into damnation and accidentally spawned a new Chaos God that would eternally hunt for their souls, whoopsies, the Elder were in a bit of a pinch. They had their craft worlds, but their armies were quite pathetic and would not stand a chance against all the horrors of the galaxy and the emerging human empire. So a dude called Asaman decided to become a demigod and created the Dire Avengers, the first of the Aspect Warriors, the Eldar Elite. His first students would then go on to found their own Aspect Shrines. Margan was one such student. However, he was almost the most twisted of them all. See, his craft world, Altansar, was too close to the Elder Empire when Slanesh was born, so it got caught in the Birth's gravity well. Margan desperately tried to stop his craft world from being dragged into the Eye of Terror, but after five centuries, it was eventually pulled in and he was forced to abandon it. So as you can imagine, he wasn't the cheeriest of blokes. However, he has channeled that trauma into becoming an absolute weapon. First, I want to talk about his death-like visage. In Warhammer 40k, the reason why people fear death and see death as a hooded Grim Reaper with a sun is because of the Nightbringer Catan, whose power imprinted the fear of death into all races, except the Orcs because they don't give a fuck. As the Elder were one of the direct enemies of the Catan, they were to be affected the most, so Margin to cosplay as the Nightbringer was a big ball move, telling death not only did you not fear it, but you have become it, wielding death better than death itself. As for his scythe gun, even saying that sounds badass, it's called the Margatar, which means harvester and Eldar. Margin believed that the right weapon used by the White Warrior could have the precision of a scalpel, regardless of it being ranged or melee, but to be honest, this just sounds like him trying to sound wise in order to justify his use of a fucking Gatling scythe gun. His weapon has obscene stopping power. Each shot is like a powered razor disc that can bisect or decapitate multiple people in a row, making a mockery of power armor or shielding. The rate of fire is also insane. It basically makes a bolt gun look like a water pistol. During the Tyranid invasion of Yandin, Margin and 100 elite Dark Reapers were assigned to protect the Heart Shrine of the Craft World, a symbol that wasn't allowed to fall. The Nids charge forward in their thousands, small and large beasts. Margan and his warriors unleash barrage after barrage, killing thousands of Nids per second. As the Horde closed in, Margan said, it's time to fuck, and he turned off safe mode on his Margatar before unleashing raw death, each shot taking the lives of over a dozen Nids. Then a big ass Morlock came out of the ground and attacked, so Margan decided to climb up it and started shanking it. Even when it impaled him and threw him to the ground, he just got up and used his power scythe to kill it. Then he got stuck back into the frenzy. Needless to say, not a single Tyranid defiled the shrine that day. 
day. A similar showing of death occurred during the Inari's battle against the Thousand Sons in the Webway. Margan shredding through Titsnichi and demons like a minigun shreds through nine-year-olds. Before I move on to Margan's other dope moments beyond just his ability to turbo penetrate an entire army with his power scythe gun, I want to talk about the infamous Margan versus an entire Tyranid army incident. A lot of people get confused here, with them thinking it was Margan versus a Tyranid Hive Fleet. As much as I would love to see that, that just didn't happen nor could it happen. What he did do was stand alone against a Tyranid Swarm and came out on top, which is still very impressive. Tyranid Swarms don't have a specific number of warriors, but it would easily be in the thousands and would make up a large variety of forms, including some of the elite forms. I even had a rendition of this made like 3 or so years ago because it was so badass. How did he do it? Well, the law regarding it is just a small paragraph that doesn't go into too much detail, however I assume that 90% of the kills were done with the Margata before he then got stuck in with melee. Margan is still a melee beast, he has this ability to become unmovable, so as the Tyranids would wash over him, he would begin spinning the Power Scythe, turning into a meat blender while not giving an inch. He is also very fast and agile, so him kiting the tits out of the swarm and turning it into a COD Zombies match is also on the cards. Either way, the man knows how to kill and is bloody good at it. With this in mind, it's no crazy surprised that Margan is believed to be the only, if not one of the only, Phoenix Lords who has never been killed. See, Phoenix Lords get their name from the fact that if they die, they can be reborn via one of their Aspect Warrior Exarchers donning their armor. At which point the mighty soul of the Phoenix Lord will overwrite the Exarch and be reborn. However, for Margan, as far as we can tell, he is still the same flesh and blood that he was over 10,000 years ago. As a fun little fact, he is full brothers with Baharoth, the Phoenix Lord of the Swooping Hawks, giving them a bit of a yin and yang dynamic, where Margan is this immovable object and Baharoth is this unstoppable force. One holds the line and the other breaks it. Probably no surprise that the winged speed demon that swan dives at his enemies has died a shitload of times, whilst the dude that holds the line is never met his end. If it wasn't already obvious, Margan is a bit of an edgelord. I mean, dude literally cosplays as the Grim Reaper, but I rate it. After all, I am pretty extra myself. Probably the most main character extra moment Margan ever had was when he wanted to forge the Margata. After all, having a weapon with the stopping power to kill God, or at least solo kill armies, requires a bit of spicy craftsmanship. To forge it, he traveled to a crone world in the Eye of Terror, fought a Keeper of Secrets and defeated it. This gave him access to this special Death Wraith Bone to use as the weapon's structure. However, he needed to temper the blade, thus he summoned an Avatar of Cain and shoved the blade into its heart, infusing the blade with the power of Cain. To get the Soul Stones for the weapon, which would act as its power source, he had to ransack the tomb of a bunch of dead Farseers, who came back to life to try to stop him, but he just killed them again. Okay, nice. Now he needed someone who could put the weapon together. Thus he kidnapped one of the best bone singers in the Eldar race and forced him to forge it. Afterwards he blinded then removed the tongue of the bone singer. Then he also cut off his hands. God damn it, Margan. He now had his super weapon though, so there you go. Despite all this awesome killing, Margan missed his craft world. He missed it a lot. See, Margan used to be this little nerdy ass scientist dude before he got jacked as hell and became death incarnate. And that small nerdy Margan that missed home was still in there. So when the 13th Black Crusade kicked off, creating shitloads of openings to enter into the Eye of Terror, Margan said, fuck it, cowbunga it is, before flying into the Eye of Terror. To everyone's astonishment, he actually found his craft world intact and then dragged it out of hell. This time, Time clearing the gravity well and getting it back to safety. Now spending 10,000 years in literal hell isn't that fun, so Craftworld Altensar is a bit cooked, with none of its members ever removing their helmets and they only speak in whispers. However, they seem solid and staunchly anti-chaos. So where is Margan Ra now? Well, his last main appearance was when he and most of the Phoenix Lord appeared in the webway to save the Inari from the Thousand Suns. Although I wouldn't be surprised if it says in the newest codex that he has reappeared after that battle and continues to mow down bitches like unruly grass. Eldar lore has sort of come to a screech halt after the embarrassment of the Inari plotline, but hopefully with the recent model releases, a bit more money has been pumped into them which motivates GW to dust off Margan Ra and let him do what he does best, be a total badass. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel then pick up the cosplay calendar, only around one week to get it before it's gone. Hit the subscribe button then hit the real subscribe button for more awesome Eldar content. Join the discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.